Listen to this. Come and worship for those who woke early and for those who slept late, for those who tune in often and for those you're here for the first time, whether you're first or last or somewhere in between, whether you feel on top of the world or weighed down by it. There is room for all in God's kingdom and there is more than enough grace and love to go round. So let's come and worship God together. you that nothing compares to knowing you Lord that we could gain all the riches in this world Lord but we I would count it loss Lord for for knowing you Lord and knowing of your love and your amazing grace Lord in our lives Lord we worship you this morning Lord and we say that there is none like you <laughs> God, there 
Church. We are so glad that you have joined us here this morning. Whether you're just checking us out for the first time, or you've just been looking at our services since we went online a few weeks ago, or you're one of our regular members here at West Wickham and Shirley Baptist Church, we just want to say you are hugely welcome with us this morning. And we hope and pray that you will be blessed by this service. We also want to say that we would love to keep in contact with you. So just along the bottom now, our email address is going to flash up. That's John or Sarah at www.sbc.org.uk. We would love to stay in contact with you, especially if you are new to us. Let us know who you are. We would love to get to know you. We also just wanted to remind you that we have care packages available. If you find yourself in need at this time, whether it be financial, whether you need food shopping done, whatever it may be, if you just want prayer or to chat with somebody, we would love to get in contact. So if you go onto our website, which again is flashing up at the bottom, www.sbc.org.uk, you'll find a care package form there. If you click on that link and fill in that form, someone will get back to you very soon. We would love to be able to support you. Please know that if you are going through a difficult time you are not on your own and we as a church are here for you so please do get in contact if you need to also later on in the service we'll be celebrating communion together and john will be leading us through that so why not press pause right now and go and get get some bread and some wine or whatever you can find to celebrate communion uh, it doesn't matter if you're on your own or if you've got your family with you we would love to celebrate communion as a family together later on wherever you might be whenever you're watching this we'll celebrate communion later on so press pause run and get your bread and wine right now and lastly, lastly, we are going to have a church meeting this morning at 12 o'clock and the link will be coming out or should have come out through uh, the WhatsApp group and through the church suite email. If you need more information about that, then again, press pause right now and email either John or myself and we will get back to you. But the church meeting will be straight after this service at 12 p.m. So do join us for that if you're a member of this church. We would love to see you at that church meeting. We're going to go through the rest of the service now, so God bless you and God keep you and enjoy the service. Good morning, church family. Stuart is taking a well-earned rest this week. I've got no idea where Safari Dave has gone. Perhaps he's got a week off too. Now, during this time when we've been mostly stuck inside and unable to do the things we normally do, we've all learned how good it is to talk to each other. And it's especially good when we talk face to face. Now, when we can't do that, we have found other ways of talking, either through phone calls, texts, emails, YouTube, or maybe Zoom. Before the internet, however, if you couldn't talk to somebody, you would have to leave them a note. And I've brought along a few of the notes that have been left for me. So there's the first one. That's really nice. Here's the second one. 
that's not quite as nice. And then here's the third note, which is not really very nice at all. Still, God also likes to talk with us, and he has left us a lot of notes, all of which have been put together in this book, the Bible. Now, it's a pretty thick book, as you can see. It contains a lot of notes, which just goes to show how chatty God is. He's got a lot to say to us, telling us who he is, why he made us, and how we can have the best life possible. Now, the notes in the Bible sometimes use some pretty long words, and I've got the longest word here, just so that we can see. Here it is, coming along, still coming, still coming. That is a very long word. I've got absolutely no idea what it means, and I'm not sure very many people have. But the good news is that we've got John, Sarah and Stuart, and they've been specially trained to know what all the long words mean. And their job is to explain to us what God is talking about using the small words that we understand. Now, most of the words in the Bible are not long. And when God has something really important to say to us, he only uses short words so that everybody can understand what he's saying. Two of the shortest words in the Bible are also frequent ones. They appear a lot and they are these words. Here's the first one, do. We all know what do means. It means to do things, to do the washing up, go for a walk, play in the park. And here's the second word, be. We all know what be means. It means to be things, to be happy, to be sad, to be friendly, to be grumpy. So there you are. Very easy. Now, what most people don't know is that all the words in the Bible have a competition to see which is the most important word in the Bible. The winner gets a trophy, which I've got here. As you can see, it's called the most important word in the Bible trophy. Now, do and be were always arguing about who is the most important. And funnily enough, they got paired against each other in the first round of the competition. Now, this is only the first round, do you understand? The winner of this tie would go and meet the winner of Love and Grace. Now, Do has got a big team of supporters who call themselves Team Do, and they wore hats just like this. And whenever they were supporting Do, they would shout, Do, Do, Do. Team B wore similar hats, but slightly different. And guess what they would think? Correct, B, B, B. There was another group of people who couldn't quite make up their mind which word was the most important. And they were called Team Sinatra, and they would shout, Dooby 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 Doo. Now that's the only part of the talk that many of the grown-ups will remember. But anyway, on the day of the match, Do stood up in front of the crowd and he said, I'm clearly the most important. Because in the Bible, in the first half of the Bible, which we call the Old Testament, God spent a lot of time telling everybody what he wanted them to do or what he didn't want them to do. Do this, do that, do the other. So clearly, do is the most important word. All of Do's team cheered him on. Do, do, do. Then it was B's turn. B thought he was the best. You could tell that just by looking at his knees. There's B's knees, can you see? So B stood up and he said, well, that might be the case, but in the second half of the Bible that we know as the New Testament, there are more notes from God where he's telling us who he wanted us to be rather than what he wanted us to do. All of B's team cheered him on. B, B, B. And of course, the Sinatra team were in the background cheering on everybody. Dooby, 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 doo. Now, nobody could decide who the winner was, and so God was asked to decide. As God spoke, everybody went quiet, waiting to see what he would say. God said, hmm, you're right that in the early days, I did used to use the word do a lot, and it was quite an important word. However, things all changed when I sent Jesus into the world. Jesus told everyone that God was more interested that they become the people that God wants them to be rather than they do the things that God wants them to do. So Jesus told us it's important to be kind, to be loving, to be helpful, to be thankful, to be patient and to be God's family. God then explained, explained that Jesus died on a cross so that a lot of the things that we had to do before that 
weren't as important anymore. So, in summary, he declared B the winner. As you can imagine, B and his team were very happy and they went off to tell everybody what kind of people God wanted them to be. Do was fed up. There was no shouting, no cheering. He just sat around feeling sad. God saw this and he went up to do and he said, what's to do, do? Cheer up. Let me tell you a secret. As well as being a really chatty God, I'm also a really clever God. You just watch what happens now. As soon as people hear Jesus's message about who they need to be and they start to be those people, they'll suddenly want to do the things I want them to do. But this time they'll want to do them rather than feel that they have to do them because it says so in my notes. This cheered do up such a lot and he went off home singing do do do. So there you go. While we're all spending more time at home and not able to do a lot of the things we usually do, it's a really good time to find out what God wants us to be and to focus on that as the most important thing. Hi everybody, um, John's asked me to do a testimony about being a key worker at the moment. I'm going to give a little bit of a background as to how I became a key worker. Um, a long time ago, I prayed to God about what he wanted me to do with my life. Not necessarily about work at that time, just what he wanted. And he showed me a vision of feeding people. At that time, I thought he wanted me to work with the homeless or in food bank um, but that wasn't what he wanted I, I got my I misread the vision about a year later um, we were having money problems as a family and I knew that I would need to go into work um, so I prayed to God and asked him to open doors for me and to give me interviews well, at that time I actually only got one interview and I got the job and I took that as a sign that that's where God wanted me because he didn't open any other doors for me. And I started my job and I really loved my job and I was very good at it. It wasn't a career move I would have made, but it felt natural to me. Um, about Eight months down the line, I just felt a bit underappreciated in that job. I was working six days a week or nights, um, and it was taking its toll. And I prayed again, and I said, Daddy, um, where do you want me? Am I doing this right? What do you want me to do? And he showed me another vision, and that vision was um, of me in a sinking ship. And Jesus came along, and he picked me up, and he flew with me. And we flew into a different ship, and Jesus stayed, stayed with me until that ship was safe to shore. Um I took that as a sign that Jesus wanted me to move from a sinking ship into a new ship. And at that time, there was a job going in my husband's workplace as a night carer. And I decided to go for that interview and I got that job. And um, I love my job. I love where I am. Um we're a big family, um, everybody gets along, I love my clients, um, I just feel I'm exactly where I should be. Um, and then Corona hit and it's hit our home hard because a lot of people have been furloughed, a lot of people can't be at work at the moment so I am having to do overtime. But um, I believe God put me in this 
in, in this exact home, at this exact moment to do this exact job because he knew that it would take someone with a big heart and with strength. Um, I'm not going to say it's easy. It's really hard at the moment. Um, very tired. But we all get through. And in our home, everybody is there for everyone. And we just all pull through. And it's amazing. Um, this is also giving me time to reflect at the moment more on God because where I work nights some Sundays I wasn't able to come to service anymore because I was just so tired but now I can I can always see the service I don't miss the service anymore um it's great to be on whatsapp with everyone and I just feel that God has taken this time um to unite his church family in a different way. I think it's amazing what is happening through even throughout the chaos. We have an anchor and he will never leave our side and he'll always be there through every storm. And for that, I love him. And I just want you all to hold on to the fact that even though this is a hard time, that with family, with work family, with your family, with church family, you can weather any storm as long as Jesus is your anchor. Goodbye, everyone. Stay safe. Good morning everyone, my name is Florin and this morning I'm going to pray and my prayer will be in Romanian. Let's pray. Tatăl nostru, îți mulțumim în numele Domnului Iisus pentru binecuvântarea pe care ai revărsat-o din belșug în viețile noastre. Îți mulțumim, Doamne, că în perioada aceasta de carantină ne-ai vorbit, ne-ai cercetat, Doamne, și ne-ai dat binecuvântarea și oportunitatea să arătăm celor din jurul nostru, din comunitatea noastră, pe Hristos Domnul. Îți mulțumim, Doamne, pentru purtarea de grijă în cele mai mici amănunte ale vieții noastre. Îți mulțumim pentru sănătate, Doamne. Îți mulțumim că în perioada aceasta ne-ai vorbit și ne-ai cercetat prin cuvântul Tău. Îți mulțumim, Doamne, pentru toți aceia prin care Tu ne-ai vorbit și ne-ai cercetat. Îți mulțumim, Dumnezeul nostru, pentru că în perioada aceasta, Doamne, am avut harul să Te cunoaștem mai mult. Îți mulțumim pentru cuvântul Tău, îți mulțumim pentru prietenii pe care i-ai așezat lângă noi, Doamne. Îți mulțumim, mulțumim pentru biserica în care ne-ai așezat. Doamne, Te rugăm în numele Domnului Isus Hristos să... Binecuvintesc fiecare familie în parte, Doamne, din biserica noastră, Doamne. Te rugăm să binecuvintezi comunitatea în care noi ne aflăm, Doamne, și ajută-ne pe fiecare dintre noi acolo unde sunt în Tatăl nostru să fim o binecuvântare și o lumină, pentru că ne-ai așezat acolo cu un scop. Doamne, îți mulțumim în numele Domnului Isus Hristos pentru toți aceia, Doamne, care în perioada aceasta te-au cunoscut ca Domn și Mântuitor. Îți mulțumim pentru medici, Doamne, pentru tot personalul din spitalele din Londra, Doamne, și nu numai, din întreaga lume. Îți mulțumim pentru fiecare dintre ei, Doamne. Te rugăm în numele Domnului Iisus să-i binecuvintesc pe ei și familiile lor. Îți mulțumim, Doamne, pentru toți aceia, Doamne, care au fost în linia întâi, Doamne. Te rugăm să-i păzești și să-i ocrutești Tu. Și te rugăm, Doamne, să le atingi viața într-un mod deosebit, mai întâi de toate, Doamne, să le dai mântuirea Ta. Îți mulțumim, Doamne, pentru pastorii și slujitorii din Marea Britanie, Doamne. Îți mulțumim, Doamne, pentru slujirea lor, pentru devotamentul lor, Doamne. Te rugăm în numele Domnului Isus să le dai cuvânt, Doamne, și 
Doamne, să îi păzești pe ei și familiile lor. Tatăl nostru, te rugăm în numele Domnului Isus să binecuvintezi de asemenea, Doamne, pe cei din guvernul Marii Britanii. Te rugăm Dumnezeu nostru să dai înțelepciune, Doamne, și pricepere ca în aceste momente, Doamne, și în perioada aceasta, Doamne, să ia decizii pentru slava și gloria numelui Tău. Te rugăm pentru maestatea asta, Doamne, și pentru familia regală, Doamne. Te rugăm în numele Domnului Isus Hristos să îi binecuvintești și să-i păzești, Doamne. Îți mulțumim că suntem în mâna Ta. Îți mulțumim că ne păzești și ne ocrutești. Îți mulțumim, Dumnezeu nostru, pentru prezența Ta în familiile noastre, Doamne. Îți mulțumim că în, aceste, în această perioadă, Doamne, Tu ai fost acela, Doamne, care ne-ai purtat din biruință în biruință. Și îți mulțumim, Dumnezeu nostru, că o vei face în continuare. Te binecuvântăm și îți mulțumim. Te rugăm în numele Domnului Isus. Amin. Hey, hi everyone. I hope that you're all well. This is our uh, youth Bible study group, and we just thought that some of our young people would share how they've been finding lockdown and the coronavirus so far. Hi, I'm Jack. Um, since my A levels have been cancelled and stuck in isolation, I've been running every day and keeping that up. So yeah. Hi, my name's Abby, and um, I've learned to adapt to teaching myself from home. And I'd like to appreciate the little things in life. And I'm also co-writing a book with Matt. Hi, I'm Sam. Uh, during quarantine, I've been working at a care home, helping out the elderly and mostly just cleaning. Um, hi, I'm Saffron. And my mum works in intensive care and my dad helps out in the ward. So um, I've been going to school, which has been really fun. Hello, I'm Matt. I've been learning Spanish, uh, I've been working on a screenplay, and I've been practicing piano. Hi, I'm Hannah, and I've been tutoring kids on a one-to-one -one basis virtually. I'm Demon, I co-lead the group with Stuart, and I have spent lockdown trying to keep the children fed and encouraging Sam to employ the new cleaning habits he's learned at the care home in his own bedroom. Amazing. So there's a little bit about what some of our young people have been getting up to during the coronavirus. If you could be in prayer for all of our young people, I know that they would really appreciate it and that would be amazing. There you have it. Boom. The reading is taken from Luke 13 verses 18 to 21. The parables of the mustard seed and the yeast. Then Jesus asked, What is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air perched in its branches. Again he asked, What shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like yeast that a woman took, to, took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. Here is the word of the Lord. It's great to be with you this morning and to be sharing bread and wine together just a little bit later on. So if you haven't got any bread and wine right now for communion, pause here and go and grab some. Now, let's talk about bread for a moment. It turns out that we are a bit of a nation of bakers. If you've been to the shops recently, you'll know flour, well, is almost non-existent. Or if you've gone for yeast, <laughs> you're more likely to find a unicorn on the shelf. But I don't know about you, but bread is something which is so comforting and warm. And, and I think making it just makes us feel more alive. It's something which generation after generation have done. When the going gets tough, we make bread. And I love making bread. And I love eating bread. So... In the absence of yeast in the shops, I've got into making my own yeast or my own leaven. And yeah, you know, it's pretty meh, as you would imagine. It's pretty messy business creating what is called a starter. Now, a starter is just flour and water left in a warm place. And slowly but surely, it starts to get hungry. So you feed it. 
and you feed it with more flour and more flour and the hungry it gets, it begins to get funky, foaming up and bubbling away until it begins to smell like a brewery. Now, apparently, according to my wife, that is not what she wanted our bedding to smell like when I kept my starter in the airing cupboard. But hey, the bread it makes is delicious sourdough bread. Now, sourdough starters are an ancient way of making bread. And it would have been something that Jesus would have seen time and time again on the, the corners of the villages as women made starters in order to make bread. And Jesus uses bread making in this parable, a parable about the yeast. This is what he says. What else is the kingdom of God like? It's like leaven that a woman took and mixed into about 27 kilos of flour until it worked its way all through the dough. 27 kilos of flour. That is an enormous amount. And the starter, the leaven, would have all but been lost in the midst of it all. Just like those teeny tiny particles of yeast we have when they're put into flour just seem to disappear. But this tiny, almost unseen, totally unimpressive yeast turns the ordinary into the extraordinary. It turns the inedible flour into something delicious. Jesus seems to love the small things, the seemingly insignificant things, like the yeast, or like the parable just before that, the, the mustard seed, or, or the sparrow, or the lost coin, or the tiny lost sheep, when the shepherd had 99 others to worry about. It's a kingdom fact that the small things matter to God. Now, in my journey on discovering sourdough starters, I've learned that the very beginnings of a starter are often called the mother, the originator, where it all began. From those small, humble beginnings comes starter after starter after starter. That makes loaf after loaf after loaf. It can go on ad infinitum. In fact, there are starters that are years old. In a simple stroke, Jesus, in his words on making bread, teaches what the kingdom of God looks like. And what is the kingdom of God? Simply put, the kingdom of God is what the world would look like if God was in charge rather than us, rather than the politics or the finance or the unseen forces in the world. The kingdom of God is a way of doing things differently. The excluded are included. The hungry are fed. Being different is celebrated rather than shunned. Injustice is made right. Sharing is second nature. Oppression and abuse is no more. Disease is eradicated. Come on! Wouldn't that be amazing? Joy and fulfilment are reality, not just a distant dream. Listen again to those words of Jesus, this tiny little parable. What else is the kingdom of God like? It is like leaven that a woman took and mixed into about 27 kilos of flour until it worked all through the dough. The kingdom of God is like. Well, what is the kingdom of God like? What is Jesus saying through this seemingly insignificant parable? Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like a woman making bread. And in Jesus' day, those that were listening would have had their mouths open, indignant even. The kingdom of God is like a woman making bread. In Jesus' day, women were not afforded respect, let alone given a central role in the importance of building God's kingdom. A woman? But there's more. It's not just a woman. It's a woman's work that's put front and centre. Now, I can hear what's going on in some of your minds right now. Some of us are going, oh, great. Not only is a woman's work never done, but now it's got to show the entirety of God's kingdom through it. But you know what Jesus is doing here is deeply subversive. The kingdom of God is among us 
And it's often in the least, in the smallest, in the tiniest, in the most unexpected places. It's not with the power brokers. It's with the small and insignificant. Sometimes we think that the kingdom of God has to come with revival and that's going to come with a Christian celebrity or a big glitzy glamorous event or through some national initiative led by the good and the great. That's how God's kingdom will come, not through me. But Jesus suggests here that it is through the ordinary, even lowly, least expected that the kingdom of God is going to come. The whole story of the Bible is that God is working to establish his kingdom of justice, inclusion and peace here on earth. And he calls us to work with him in that great task of transformation in a world that is so far away from justice and peace. You and I are called by God to build his kingdom here to join God in what he is doing here on earth. Now, you might well be thinking, me? Yes, you. We need to wake up to what God has always intended for us, to flourish, free from oppression, free to live a life in all its fullness. And that means joining God in the task of transformation here on earth. In 2008, 38-year-old Naomi Jacobs woke up believing that she was only 15 years of age. When she discovered that she was a mother and she had an 11-year-old son living in her house while she lived off benefits, she didn't know what was going on. Well, the newspapers picked up on this story and reported that she had suffered from global amnesia. And this is what she said. I'd fallen asleep in a world of possibilities as a 15 year old and I'd awoken into a nightmare. Many of us probably haven't had global amnesia, but a lot of us have probably woken up and felt disappointed with the life that we were leaving. Many of us may have asked the question, is this all there is? We may feel like we've been sleepwalking through life. But Jesus says to us, there is more, so much more to discover on how to be all we were meant to be. In fact, he doesn't just tell us, he shows us what being really looks like. Jesus is a bit like the mother starter. The kingdom of God started with him and through his power and through his Holy Spirit, The same starter lives in you. Wow. Perhaps we need to wake up. Maybe we've been sleepwalking through the humdrum of life. Eat, sleep, repeat. Eat, sleep, repeat. Perhaps we think there's nothing more to life than that. But there is. There is something bigger, brighter and far more fulfilling. You were made for so much more. Perhaps it's time in this lockdown period to let the master starter awaken something within you. Which leads me to the second element in this tiny parable. We've had the starter. Now what about the flower? Hmm. You know, the flower of a particular region or nation or culture will determine the taste of the bread that you're eating. So you may have the humble farmhouse loaf or the Turkish pide or the Iranian lavish bread or the delicious Indian naan or the siabatta of Italy or the labigetta of La France or the bami bread of Jamaica. You, You get the idea. The environment of the flour that the bread is made from is what influences the taste influences the appearance. But at the end of the day, each and every one of them is still bread. Each and every one of them is still delicious. Here is a kingdom truth. The kingdom of God is active and at work through us just as we are. Just as we've been made to be. 
No matter what you look like, where you were born, your gender, your sexuality, whether you're rich or poor, able-bodied or not, God is looking not for cookie-cutter Christians, all from the same mould. Instead, we should be living out faithfully who we've been made to be. Have you discovered who you've been made to be? Because the world needs you. In your uniqueness, in your diversity, you have influence that can change, well, the atmosphere around you. Right now, with such macro issues going on, when everything seems to need worldwide vision, collaboration and expertise, you may, and I do certainly, feel a bit hopeless and useless. But this tiny parable says of us, Otherwise, Jesus tells us the small influences can have a huge effect. Yeast, teeny tiny yeast that seems so small and hidden works its way through to powerfully change the flour into delicious bread. And as we open our lives up to the presence of God, allowing the spirit to start awakening and to activating the kingdom within us, we can influence this world beyond what we can see. It is in the small things, the kind text, the phone call, the reaching out to meet someone's need, the prayer off, the card sent, the finance shared, the toilet roll given. It's the love of Jesus given without strings attached, that can grow into something really quite extraordinary. These things might not grab headlines, they might not hit the news cycle, but one at a time, these small acts given out of what we are becoming will change the world. Certainly, if you go back to the early church, those little acts of generosity began to change Jerusalem and then it flowed out into the rest of the world. Maybe it's time for us to wake up, to pray the Lord's Prayer and making it personal, saying, your kingdom come in me as it is in heaven. Your will be done in me as it is in heaven. Whoever you may be, you are called to play your part in building the kingdom of God here on earth as in heaven. And the earth needs you because through you, God is going to establish his kingdom. One tiny act at a time. Is it time for you to be activated? Maybe it's time for you to invite the master starter to do something new and fresh in your life that you can play the part in building God's kingdom here in West Wickham and Shirley. Let's pray. Father God, each and every one of us has been made in your image and yet we are unique. Such diversity is represented in our church family and beyond. I thank you that, Lord, each and every one of us has a part to play in building your kingdom. And so I pray now that you would awaken us I pray, Lord, that the the yeast in our lives may, may do something spectacular. It may help us to rise up out of our slumber and to do things for you and for your kingdom. Whether that's by praying, whether that's by acting, whether that's by realizing who we are in you, discovering who we are in you. I pray, Lord, that each and every one of us may have a change and may it start now in our lives. And Lord, may you see it through to completion, something which is beautiful, something which is delicious, something that impacts the world around us. Thank you that no matter how tiny we may feel, you can use us to be influencers, to bring about your purposes here on earth. Lord, may West Wickham and Shirley Baptist Church, your family, although not in a building, Lord, I thank you that we are spread out in the flower this community. And I pray, Lord, that we may activate and change the society around us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, we're going to move into communion now. So if you haven't got your bread or you haven't got your wine, then again, please pause here and go and grab some.
Because we're going to remember that Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. We've just been looking at bread. And I think significantly, Jesus broke it, knowing that his body would be broken too. And as he held the bread, he said, eat this in remembrance of me. So friends, if you've got some bread right now, why don't you tear off a piece and eat and remember what Christ Jesus has done for you. His body was broken for you. That Jesus suffered at the cross for you. That he gave his life that we might be forgiven, free from our sins. That we might have new life that activated within us to be the very kingdom of God. Let's eat and be thankful for all that he has done for us. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. As he held it, he said, this is my blood. And this is the new covenant. And my blood has been shed for you. The new covenant meant that now everyone was welcome to belong at the table. Everyone was welcome to come into the kingdom of God. Everyone belonged. And that includes you, includes me. Jesus has made it possible for us to belong to him and his kingdom. So let's drink and be thankful for all that he has done for us. Let's be still for a moment. Lord Jesus, we thank you that through these very simple elements of bread and wine, we are reminded of all that you have done to bring the kingdom of God into reality. That through your death and through your resurrection, there is the possibility of new life, even from death. And I pray, Lord, that each and every one of us might today hold heart in our hearts that wonderful truth that you are with us always, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, whatever you now do for the rest of this day, I pray that you would be richly blessed. You might know God's presence with you and that you might know that leaven, that yeast bubbling up within you to bring about change in the world around. Go and be an influencer in this world. No matter how tiny you may feel, God will use you. God bless you and have a great day.